We are speaking with four grassroots Republicans about the upcoming Super Tuesday Texas primary and specifically for president. And I'm joined by Kathy Adams. We've got Sanjay Narayan. We've got Jonathan Booz and Eugene Ralph. And thank you all very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kathy, ladies first, we'll start with you. Who are you voting for for president and why? I am an excited supporter of President Trump. And the reason is because what he did his first term, I thought was a-okay. We would not have all of these wonderful pro-life laws across the country if that decision had not been given back to the states. So Roe v. Wade was a very big decision that was all due to what Donald Trump had done. I also was very pleased with the border security that we had under Donald Trump and certainly the economy that we had under Donald Trump. So I'm an excited supporter of Donald Trump. All right, let's go to Jonathan. Yeah, so uh, early on when Ron DeSantis had jumped in the race, I was a big fan and have supported Ron since um, he jumped in. Obviously, Mr. DeSantis has uh, suspended his campaign. Um, so I'm, uh, and it's very clear that uh, Donald Trump is going to be our nominee. So I'm very excited to uh, be voting for uh, Mr. Trump uh, for president again in uh, in the fall. And Eugene. Yes, um, I've been on board with Donald Trump since he's, you know, throughout this time. I was very uh, impressed with his first term. And um, I believe that he needs to have a second term in order to complete the job that he started. And Sanjay. Uh, I guess I'll round out the quartet. I'm uh, probably supporting President Trump again. Uh, happy to do so. His record on the economy in his first term spoke for itself. Since he's left office, real wages are down. Real median household income is down. The level of wage growth has not kept up with the aggregate level of inflation. American people are hurting today. On the border, we have a self-induced crisis at this point. Uh, Donald Trump had relatively secured the border. We had remain in Mexico. All of these programs were ripped up on day one by Joe Biden. So this is entirely self-created. And on the foreign policy front, I don't think it gets enough credit. I mean, Americans today are in greater peril than we've been in generations. We did not have war breaking out in Eastern Europe or in the Middle East. And that's really because we've really created a security vacuum across the world as, America, as, as America's foes see weakness in our current White House occupant. And I think we need strength and predictability back in the White House. So I'm looking forward to President Trump returning. And Sanjay, I'll, I'll ask you, as far as the issues that are most important to you this election cycle, what is what are the key priorities for you? It's definitely the economy, making sure that we return back to a stability with regulatory policy, making sure that we're encouraging energy production and innovation here at home. The Biden administration just shut down permits for LNG export facilities, which is a critical industry here in Texas that's going to hurt American jobs, especially here in Texas, making sure that we secure our border. Uh, we've got millions of people coming across. I think the last count was 3 million people came into this country illegally. That's just the known gotaways. That's not people who are unknown. That's just simply unacceptable. You know, our governor Abbott is trying to build a fence. At the, at the border and the administration is trying to cut holes in it. It's completely unacceptable. And then foreign policy as well, making sure that we have stability and peace around the globe. That's in America's vital national interest. We shouldn't be uh, exposed ourselves in places where most Americans can't place out on a map. I think those are all critical and, and really have fallen apart since President Trump left office and those are my top issues. All right, thank you so much. And let's go to Eugene. Okay. Um... Most of many, much of what Sanjay said, I agree with, and I would say if I had to add anything to it, there's a, there's an understanding that when you have a strong leader uh, in geopolitical terms, um, your your nation is going to be respected and respected properly, and I believe that that has has gone by, by the wayside for for many years, uh, decades now. We've had uh, people in a position of president who. I've been, I've, I'm inclined to believe did not have the best inter interests of the country at heart, truly, primarily because of many of the decisions they made were designed to weaken America and strengthen our opposition. If you look back on it, go back 30 years and you re you'll realize that China was, no, was not a threat to us in any way. 
30 years ago, but it was because of the buildup of China, because we went over there and, 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 you know, because supposedly because of cheap labor, but in many ways, I think that was a big part of it, but in many ways we allowed them to become the, 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 the behemoth that they become uh, economically And this. And I don't have anything against that. It's just that my problem is I don't believe we should do that at the, at the, uh, while sacrificing Americans' jobs and in and our um, our economic stability, and and at the same time we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage uh, militarily. So I think that when we look at those those sort of well-rounded big ticket items, there's a lot to be concerned about there. And then when it comes down to the border, it's just unbelievable the kind of things we wa we're watching here. And although much of what took place under the Trump administration to get a handle on the border worked. Unfortunately, it was because of the Republicans who were in the House and the Senate that did not support those measures that he did that by um, executive order, which makes it easily to be undone when the new president comes in. We need permanent policy in place. And also, uh, I've heard a lot of discussion regarding this. I believe this current president needs to be brought up on treason charges because the bottom line is when you do not do your job as protecting the nation from the opposition, from the enemy. You, you're, you've, you've not only failed, you've committed treason. That's an act of treason in my book. So I think that there's, a, there's many things that need to be dealt with, but I think ultimately we need someone who's gonna be the man who's gonna be representing America, pro-American pro values, and take on American for his attitude towards everything that he does. Jonathan. So uh, I think we're probably gonna start sounding like a broken record here. But uh, you know, one of the first and foremost things is, is the economy. Uh, we saw just last month in January, inflation ticked back up. Uh, when Donald Trump was president, we uh, cut, you know, we cut taxes. Um, he brought jobs back to the United States, and uh, so we uh, Americans are hurting right now. And we have a clear choice um, in November of two different paths. And and uh, I'll take mean tweets all day long if it means um, uh, you know my my neighbors and myself can afford our groceries when we go to the store. Um, and then the other big issue I think for me right now is is immigration. As Sanjay mentioned, we have a self inflicted. Uh, wound at the border that, you know, this is a problem of our own creation um, or the administration's creation. Um, you know, day one, when Joe Biden was in office, he rolled back many of the policies that Donald Trump had put in place that were working very, very, very well. And um, as a result, we've just seen an unprecedented number of um, illegal entries into our country. And most of these individuals are not truly seeking asylum. They're here for economic reasons. Um, and unfortunately, we're seeing the consequences of that, like we just saw this, this past weekend with a young lady murdered um, in Georgia by uh, someone who was here illegally. So uh, those are just two of the really important issues that I think Donald Trump will be able to uh, reverse the current course that we're on. And Kathy? Well, I am very excited that Donald Trump is already saying, drill, baby, drill. Our economy, one of the the basis of our economy is that we have got to have a dependable source of energy. Wind and solar don't work if the wind is not blowing and the sun is not shining. So the Paris Accords were something that Donald Trump got us out of. Of course, Joe Biden got us back into. And now we have these fly-by-night, non-scientific people like John Kerry, and Al Gore going around spewing things that are not true, and they never could debate them with a true scientist. And so that is something that we've got to take care of. The other thing is the um, definition of family. I think that by a role model, Donald Trump is leading our country in looking at the definition of family and not confusing that. And last but not least, it is first and foremost in my mind, and that is the security of Israel. Because God says in his word that he will bless those who bless Israel, he will curse those who curse Israel. And what we are doing, demanding now that there's a ceasefire when Israel is still under attack by Hamas, a terrorist organization, and the Muslim Brotherhood is absolutely bad foreign policy by Joe Biden. And it was by Barack Obama, the man that he ran with before. So those two issues are very important. We've got to drill and we've got to look at the security for our neighbors as well. 
and that means the security of Israel so that America can continue to be a blessed nation. I did have one other question. I appreciate everybody's time, and that is when you look at the polls now, and I realize it's early, um, President Trump, former President Trump, is leading uh, President Biden in some of the key battleground states, many of the key battleground states, but they are still very tight races. And so I'm wondering what each of you thinks is going to be the key for the former president to win in 2024. And whoever, I'll go first. whoever you wants want to start, start that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll go first. I believe that the um, the key is going to be it's going to be a couple of things. Number one, it's going to be help cutting through the noise and helping people who are not directly affected by the economy and what's happening to understand that that is that is what has to be dealt with and has to be dealt with forthrightly. Forthrightly. Secondly, I believe that um, a lot of the craziness that is, is spewed by the left. Um, about Donald Trump, um, a lot of I think he's going to have to have a campaign that's going to be a messaging campaign that's actually going to have to speak to those things in a clear, very clear way. Uh, one of the things that he did um, <laughs> when he ran the first time, the very first time, was he asked the the black community when he when he laid it out. He said, you know, your schools are crap, your cities are crap. You got people running that you've been voting for for decades, and look at what you got. You know, what the hell have you got to lose? I think that that woke a lot of people up and caused minorities to pay attention. And, and, and really, uh, as a black man, uh, the reality is when we talk to each other, not just black people, but people in general, uh, we, have, we get animated sometimes. We don't always speak very docile when, when con conversing with each other or communicating in some other form. And Donald Trump speaks like the average person. I think that's the reason why a lot of... Um, a lot of average people really relate to him. I refer to him as a blue collar billionaire. And a, a lot of the people, I would say, the, we refer to them as the elites. They like to, uh, to talk bad about him about because of that. But the reality is they're living in a different world. The average person does not make $350,000 a year. And, the, and, the, and the, reason, the reason that they're able to live in that world and ignore all these realities and make people think that these things are not true is because they can divorce themselves from it. And I think that he's gonna have to cut through that. He's gonna have to have a messaging campaign and people who are gonna be Johnny on the spot, just just kind of like beating these things down like a whack-a-mole in order to get, the, get his points across. Because him alone is somewhat effective, but the media does a really good job of bastardizing what he says, and often yes. it works, unfortunately. Yes. Who wants to go next? I think um, I think the key for us is, as conservatives, we've been burned by these polls in the past. We were told that a red wave was going to come in 2022. It turned into a red trickle. We've seen special election after special election and constitutional referenda across the country uh, in red states as well, where we have not won. And a lot of this comes out to blocking and tackling. Where mail-in voting is allowed, we should be adopting it. We, should, we need to get out, make sure our votes are banked so that people actually can register and make sure their voices are heard. There is going to be plenty of clutter and noise. I'm sure the media, not you, Jack, but other places will seek to censor positive news about the Trump campaign or negative news about his opponent, just like Twitter did in the prior, uh, prior term. But that's all going to be noise. Those, those are constant struggles. We need to get out and make sure our voices are heard because polls are just polls. But the actual vote on election day and during your early voting and your mail period, we have to take advantage of every available opportunity because we know our opponents are doing it. So we have to get out and vote and just make sure that those polls come true on election day. Otherwise, they'll be for nothing. And well, for the like first time in more than... Uh, 30 years, I am actually working at a job with a paycheck. And that happens to be at an HEB grocery store. Just this morning, I was there shopping and talking to one of my coworkers. And I'm working with a lot of Hispanics, of course, being on uh, next to Corpus Christi and close to the border with Mexico. It's a, an absolutely fabulous environment. But I said, you know, I understand that Biden's State of the Union, he's going to be challenging grocery stores to lower their prices as though it's a grocery store's problem. It is Bidenflation. 
And the more you talk to people about those kind of bread and butter issues that are hitting them every time they have to go to the grocery store, it means something. And I'm going to keep talking to people about those issues. The economy is in dire straits and Donald Trump knows how to fix it. So we have to go in that direction in order to save our country. And Jonathan. Sure. I think some of the key things uh, as far as making sure that Donald Trump can get across the finish line uh, in November is going to be, uh, some of this was already mentioned, but the, the basics of making sure that we turn out Republican voters. So making sure they do take advantage of early voting and vote by mail. Um, and then I think maybe the other big thing is uh, really making sure that uh, Republicans and Donald Trump, that we stay on message, that we make this about, make this election a referendum on the job that um, mm -hmm. the current president has or has not done and make it about the issues and not about the past. And if, if Donald Trump and us as a Republican party, if we can focus on um, the issues and the job that is currently being done or not being done by the current president, um, I think uh, the voters will, will have a clear choice in November and they'll um, pick the better option. Jonathan Booz, Kathy Adams, Eugene Rouse, Sanjay Narayan. Thank you all so much. Really good talking with you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it.